I'm Kirsten Stewart, and this is Connect Canyons. It's spring, the weather is warming, and canyon schools are reopening to volunteers. To support contact tracing throughout the pandemic this year, we've had to limit visitors to our campuses, but with vaccination rates picking up and the broadening availability of COVID testing, we are able to safely welcome parents, grandparents, and other volunteers back into our classrooms, and it couldn't happen at a more opportune time. As schools look to finish the year strong and make the most out of the last few months of instructional time, teachers could really use the extra hands and students could use the extra encouragement. Of course, there are health precautions. We all need to follow to safeguard our volunteers, students, and employees, but it's time to spring into volunteering. Here to explain the hows and whys behind our call for community assistance are Canyon Superintendent Dr. Rick Robbins, our Public Engagement Coordinator Susan Edwards, and Tanya Rhodes, Region 17 Director for the PTA. Welcome, you three. Thank you. Thanks, Kirsten. (laughs) Glad to be here. Hi, Kirsten. Glad to be here. Rick, let's start with you. It's back to school time for our volunteers. Starting April 12th, we are reopening our schools to these valuable partners in education. What is making this possible? We're excited to have them back. And it it really, uh, we're at that point, uh, I believe, where uh, it's safe and it's needed. And as we know, uh, as the pandemic has evolved, uh, one of the things that is very apparent is the social emotional wellness of our kids um, is a great need along with the academic needs that they have. And um, one of the great strengths of Canyon School Districts has been parents and volunteers uh, in our buildings uh, working with with our kids. And so um, with the fact that uh, our employees are uh, vaccinated at 73 percent, our teachers at 84 percent and our administration above 90 percent, and as well as the uh, increase in vaccinations across the community, as well as our efforts to provide testing, uh, we feel that the timing is right. And we really have this, I think, this golden opportunity of just a couple of months um, before school's out to really re-engage our kids and just, you know, give them a boost before summertime. So I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled that we're getting our volunteers uh, and our parents back into our building. This is such great news. You know, we've worked hard as a district to keep our schools open and our students learning. And A big part of our success has been the safety measures we've had in place. While signs point to an easing of the pandemic, we haven't really closed the door on it quite yet. Um, Vaccines aren't yet available for school-aged children, and as of Friday, March 26, there were 61 students in our district isolating at home with COVID-19. So, you know, we really need to stay the course and continue following the safety precautions that have gotten us this far while keeping an eye out for opportunities to return to, quote, normal. And I'm guessing welcoming volunteers back is a step in that direction, correct? Yeah, totally. And I think you have to, you know, frame this in the context uh, from the beginning. I I feel like we've we've really taken all of the information and the best science that's available to us to, to make our decisions. And I think it's important, too, to understand that from the beginning, our board has been committed to in-person instruction. And so things are trending in the right direction, but I, I think it's also very important for everyone to understand that we really do need to remain vigilant uh, to finish out uh, the rest of the school year. Uh, COVID is still here, and we appreciate all of the efforts. The governor did move uh, educators to the front of the line. I think that, that was very beneficial in buying us even more time. Uh, for in-person instruction with our students. They, we changed the quarantine protocols as well, as everyone is familiar with. Um, but the fact still remains that uh, COVID is still an active virus uh, in our community. Um, our positivity rates are low, but it's still between 10 and 12 percent across our zip codes. And so, um, you know, it really is about protecting each other. And so we want to really continue to try and balance these efforts as we slowly uh, open up. But uh, our intent and our goal is to get back to normal uh, as quick as we can. Uh, And hopefully when that day comes, I've had people ask, well, what does that look like? Well, I I think we all want to see a day where, you know, none of us have to wear a mask uh, at school. We just got to hang on a little bit longer. We're not quite there yet. Uh, Things are improving. 
but we, we need to stay the course just a little bit uh, longer. But getting our volunteers back into our schools uh, under these protocols that we'll talk about, I think is definitely a, a, a big step in the right direction. Susan Canyon's district, as we all know, was created by a vote of the people and perhaps as a result has always enjoyed uncommon levels of community support. I'm betting our volunteers are pretty eager to get back into schools and classrooms. Canyons usually has around 12,000 parents volunteer and people in the community volunteer, which is just astounding. I've heard from a lot of our parents, a lot of our volunteers that discuss with us how grateful they are for the protocols we've taken for keeping our students, our teachers safe, and but for still being able to run and, and function uh, and have school. So they've been patient, uh, but they are very willing to get back and, and be useful in the schools. Some of them play very big roles, some of them play very small roles, but they all um, volunteer and go through our protocols uh, to, to make sure that our kids are safe with volunteers in the schools and working with them. But uh, about 12,000 people usually volunteer. Tanya, in your role as PTA director, are you fielding calls from parents asking, when can we get back to helping teachers and principals? Yeah, I think they're really excited to get in and get that last spring teacher appreciation, do some fun things for the kids, yeah. And truly the contributions of our volunteers are priceless. You know, let's push past some misperceptions about volunteering. You know, it's about more than bake sales, right? I mean, what are some of the more common ways to get involved? If you're working parent, for example, you may not have time to tutor students in the classroom, but maybe you could help grade spelling tests. There are just so many opportunities, and there's research showing how important volunteers are from the standpoint of student achievement. Parental engagement has actually proven to be one of the greatest indicators of a school and student success. Uh, they did some studies in the 90s that showed this, and they have re uh, done those studies and expanded them uh, every few years since. It has really shown that parental engagement is one of the top indicators of, of educational success. So it's, it's very important. It goes far beyond, far beyond bake sales. And, and our PTA and our school community councils, all of our volunteers, they go far beyond that. They uh, give their heart and soul to this uh, and to helping our schools succeed and our, and our students succeed. Uh, I would say on the PTA, you know, they're in most of our schools during the day and they're kind of the heart and soul. They kind of bring the fun. Uh, you can serve on your PTA, which I'll let Tanya talk more about, um, serve on your school community council, which historically those tend to meet later after school or in the evening, which allows our working parents sometimes to serve that can't be in the schools during the day. And uh, to Susan's point, if, if there are people that are interested uh, in serving and being part, uh, we really do need you. And you know, to me, um, if you're looking for something that kind of is that maybe that first step to some normalcy, um, and you're lo you're wondering what that might look like, I, there's not a better way than than getting involved in, in our schools. Okay, so let's talk logistics. How do volunteers sign up each year in accordance with state law? All Canyons District volunteers must submit a volunteer application, which can be found on the district's website and completed online by following the prompts. Um, is the sign-up process the same this year, or are there other safety precautions and measures that folks need to be aware of? So we have two types of volunteers, uh, supervised and unsupervised. If you're a supervised volunteer, it means you're never without uh, the sight line of, of faculty, of teachers. And those volunteers just go to our website, uh, at, to, at Canyon's website, to uh, sign up to be a volunteer. Then we also have some that are unsupervised volunteers. These are usually coaches or some very specific volunteers. Principals would identify those, and if that's the case, then they are fingerprinted in human resources. All volunteers would sign up through our volunteer system. Then when they get to go back into schools, um, they will, as always, our volunteers come in the front door and they sign in through a computer system uh, that then will print out a badge if they're approved or will not if they're not, which lets the front office staff know they need to do some checking and see if this is an approved volunteer. Um, but also they'll be asked some questions at the front. Uh, have you um, had uh, any exposure to COVID? Are you running a fever? Um, are, do you have any, you know, known symptoms of COVID? Also, you know, you can show your vaccination card um, or that you've been tested um, recently and have shown that you are not, uh, that are not COVID positive. 
I understand, as a convenience to our volunteers, we are offering them courtesy rapid COVID testing at our district office. Parents can just pick up a voucher from their child's school and then come to the district office on Mondays, Wednesdays, or Fridays. You can find the exact times at canyonsdistrict.org. So our volunteers who haven't been vaccinated will be able to show proof of negative COVID tests taken within 48 hours of the day they want to volunteer. To really remain vigilant uh, and under the health order uh, in the state of Utah, we are requiring that when volunteers come back into our buildings, uh, indoors or outdoors, that they're expected to wear a mask. Um, and I know that's not fun for any of us. Uh, I, in particular, do not like wearing this mask. But um, the way I look at it is, is that if I wear the mask and that allows me to be part of the school experience and to support our employees and their families and that it, that it um, uh, will protect them, then it's worth it for me. Tanya, in talking to schools, I know we have a special need right now for tutors to work with students in small groups. You mentioned the spring fundraising activities that usually happen at this time of the year, but I'm guessing the opportunities to participate are really only as limited as your imagination. So we want parents to know that if you're not ready to work inside of our classrooms, we still need you and there are ways for you to help. Well, and our PTAs have been running online all year long. So if people are, don't want to go into the schools, they continue to help the same the way that we've been doing all year. So, And actually, right now, we are looking to fill our boards for next year. So um, this would be a great time if you're interested to reach out to your PTA president now. Um, to Tanya's point, signing up for PTA uh, volunteers, this is a time of year they do that for next school year. So if you have any interest, uh, you know, I would reach out to our, our kids that aren't yet here, our pre-K kids and our kindergarten kids that will come in next year. Get involved in your school. You know, there's ways even, don't be nervous, you know, don't, uh, don't worry about it. If you're new to Canyons District, this is a great way to meet people. If you're a seasoned parent that's been here for a long time and you have time to give, we need you. And so just get involved. Uh, look forward to next year. We want you back this year. We're excited to end the year with volunteers in schools, bringing that little extra to our schools. But we also need people to start looking forward to next year and signing up for next year. So every school in Canyons has a PTA. And we rely on the PTA structure um, to be able to train these parents to help them understand their role as, as leadership, to uh, have fiscal accountability with the money that they raise and that they're given. Uh, and it, it's invaluable to us to have trained volunteers that serve in the schools. And I think that's one of the great things about volunteering, uh, especially you know if you volunteer through PTA, you do get that leadership training and, and you also build friends for life. Uh, to me, it's really all hands on deck. I mean, I, I guess I'm I'm pleading as an all call to our community to really rise to the occasion to support our kids. It's for the kids. I, I love being able to connect with them and being able to just help and support them. You've been listening to Connect Canyons. This episode was reported and edited by Kirsten Stewart with support from Stephanie Christensen. If you like it, be sure to share it with a friend and don't forget to subscribe.